So, Sasha, I may or may not use. I don't know. She's kind of a pain to raise. If I do use her, I'll probably just train her in, in the arena. There is an arena here. In this game, sorry. Uh, I think there's several arenas, but I can't remember what chapters there are. They are in. The first one is in chapter 7, I believe. Or is it 9? It's 7. It's 7. Your name was Eugene. It's Eugene or Eugene. I don't know. What the fuck is going on? Oh, sudden mu music change. This means shit's going down. Did I change the movement speed? I'm not even sure I changed the movement speed and stuff. But then, then, Jesus, I forgot. I didn't, did I? Fuck. Oh well. I'll do that next chapter then. I need to change... Uh, maybe I did, I don't know. So Carter is kind of a dick, as we already saw, and it's pretty obvious. I mean, just look at him. And he's pretty much going to be the main guy we're trying to take on for at least the first couple chapters. And I think we get the world map after this, so I, I can at least show a part of it. And we will eventually go north. And there is some, also there is some uh, grindable maps. Or skirmishes. I believe they call them encounters. So, if I do ever want to train anyone, and I might train some pretty shit characters just because. <laughs> just because. Honestly, most of the characters in this game's growths are not good. You know, it's fucking traditional Fire Emblem. Shitty growths. Expect them. Honestly, I, I'm actually kind of glad that Runan got defense because that's 25% growth. I think that's one of his lowest, actually. Aside from magic, probably. And physical units, their their magic growth isn't that bad, generally. But that is only for defense. <clears throat> I've already forgotten this chick's name. No, why? I think it just said it, but I actually missed it. <laughs> it's time for sass, though. So, yeah. I'm gonna have to deal with these guys. La this guy's lackeys for like... I can't even remember how many chapters. So the first route split will actually be in chap after chapter 8, I believe. Or before chapter 8. It's one of the two. And then we will actually go over to Holmes's party. And, you know, we, we take it in turns to do each, you know, each party's uh, maps. Oh man, swearing. So edgy. And this guy looks badass. Also... Welt is currently the place we are in, but that just sounds like such a stupid name to me. <laughs> Seriously, Welt. Alright. <clears throat> Marin. Wait, did it say Marlon earlier? Or was it was always Marin? I'm, I can't remember. Alright, so here's the world map here. Uh, I'm gonna see it for a sec, then it's gonna go into an our cutscene. And music time. This is Raffin, and every time I hear his name or look at his name, I always think you Raff, you Ruse, which is pretty terrible. But yeah, this fucking badass old dude, we're going to be seeing him pretty soon as well. And we're actually going to get a choice of four characters to pick, and I already know who I'm picking, I'm straight up certain. And there's nothing you can do to make me change my mind, I'm sorry. Because last time I pretty much almost sold the game with him. And uh, anyone who's played this game probably knows who him is. I pretty much sold the game with him because he is just fucking ridiculous. But we'll get into that. Right now we are focusing on all these names that they are throwing at us. Seriously, 
This game is so convoluted, it has so many NPCs. And a lot of playable characters as well. I heard there was about 62. Uh, some of those you can't actually get every time because... You know... Um, sorry. You can get some of them because of... Uh, like this part coming up, you can only choose one of them. Or there's one case where you get one or the other. Kind of like Samson and Aaron. But that is an event that uh, is pretty terrible to get, so I <laughs> know what I'm doing for that as well. And here is an art character. You'll notice some of the graphical glitches here. Not really much I can do about that. I'm not actually sure if that's the translation patch or just the emulator. I'm not sure. But the second chapter is actually pretty long and pretty tedious as well. It's kind of like uh, the third chapter of FE12, in which there's even a mountain in it. But uh, yeah, you've got to you got to take your time, women. God damn it, Raffin. Uh oh. So apparently someone tells me I need to use Esther, because I have to. <laughs> and I never used her last time, but apparently our promotion is pretty good. I'm just thinking... I don't know when I'm going to train her though, because she has a bad start. Her base stats are pretty bad. And I guess... I guess she might be going with Sasha into the arena in Chapter 7. Just to get her... Uh, just to do it easily. Alright, so back to the harbour. We're gonna talk a lot, trust me. There's so much text in this game. Muse, okay. That's something later on too. Man, I, I don't even... Norzeria, I, I just... I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm sure like all of this is places will eventually go, but I can't remember any of it. Plus I skipped most of the text the first time playing through, so yeah. I tried to play this uh, in Japanese way back when, but I don't know what the fuck I was doing. But at least this will translate menus and stuff for me the whole way through. Because that's really useful. And especially the items that I pick up. Because there's very strange items in this game. Some of the weapons are extremely overpowered as well. And I'll probably abuse some of them because I don't think it's like extremely difficult the game, but some parts can be pretty difficult, especially uh, some chapters, especially, and some of the later chapters can just be annoying. Even though you can skip them, warp skip, warp skip time. Yeah, we'll get into that. That's a long way away. All right, so we can buy pretty much everything we could have bought in the weapon shop on that map. So I really don't need to go into these, it's going to be the same stuff as before, and we don't need any of it, so that's it. We can also store items, uh, I'm going to put a wooden shield in there, and I'm going to put a charm in there. And I'm going to put weapon level plus in there, and I'm going to move the wooden shield to Cress. Because... reasons. We'll, we'll see in a minute why that is. I probably don't need it anyway, but... So I can save on this map. Uh, the save just goes and uh, check my memory card. I shouldn't have any saves here. I did delete them, so I'll just save. And every time you go to the loading screen, it'll actually have a certain person's face on it. I think it just chooses it randomly. Uh, it might have characters we don't have yet. Okay, maybe it does just change. look for characters we do have. Garrow's pretty face right there. So let's move because there's going to be more text now. And yes, here we go. Double exclamation point. Well, I guess uh, I guess they were trying to mimic IS with punctuation. Makes sense. And Raffin's actually a really good unit. He's one of the early units we get that doesn't suck. <laughs> I just wanted to TS you. I just wanted to TS you. 
I didn't actually notice that the first time. I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm just gonna skip. Uh, I like to think that Raffin just went, what? <laughs> when he just done all those fucking, oh my god, all these words, no, what's happening? <laughs> what is happening, game? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright. So yes. Typos. Prepare for them. Honestly, I am actually thankful that there is a translation patch for this though, because I couldn't play through it in Japanese at all. But it is just funny to laugh at some of the stuff that is in this game, especially after chapter 9. But we'll see that, hopefully. Uh, like I said, I may redo it if a new translation patch comes out or something, or... This is going to take a while, by the way. There's 40 maps, and all of them have a lot of text in them. It's pretty... It's pretty lengthy. It's 40 maps, I mean... <sighs> Jesus. And some of them... There's a couple... I think there's a couple of bonus maps as well. Or, like, route splits, though they only span for one chapter. He is a dick, pretty much. Pretty much. Sutherland. That's a weird name. Okay. I I need like a family tree or something. I, I just need some help here. If anyone could tell me what the hell is going on, that would help. It probably would have helped if I read the intro, but... You know, I'm kind of stupid like that. The intro scrolled pretty fast, too. Dark cultists sounds good. Cultists sound good. All right. By the way, when we see this guy's stats, we'll notice he's actually pretty fucking badass. By the way. So yeah, Coder is a dick, and we're basically just reinforcing that. If you didn't already get that, because we he tried to kill us in the first chapter, pretty much. <clears throat> bandits! So yes, the second map will be against bandits. Don't think that we got away without having a map with bandits in it. No, we will have bandits. I think it's pretty much a Fire Emblem law that the first couple of maps at least contain bandits. In one chapter, at least. FE5 try to do this as well, try to give us some soldiers, but nope. Not having it that way, man. Alright. So Raffin's coming with us. I believe Esther comes with us too. Yep. There you go. No! Let her go. Come on, I've got to use you apparently, so yeah. And he will actually let us take someone else. But only one, because game reasons. I think he's just like, to guard the keep. But we're just like, yep, you can't have all of them. <laughs> only take one of them. <laughs> Alright, so let's go through these guys. Uh, let's talk to them first. So I'm going to do this from... Well, I'll do this from left to right. So this is Lee. He is a bishop. I think his class is priest. And he is actually promoted already. Uh, or at least he can't promote. He's not that great, honestly. Yeah, reconsider. Lee is okay. He's, he's level 15, so he's kind of a bit of a Jagan, uh, but he's his, I think his growth rates are pretty terrible. He can use fire, lightning, and wind, which is nice, and he does have staffs, so I don't imagine he's actually that bad. But uh, he does start with Physic, and he does have a Healing Staff, and he does have Fire, so if you pick him, you'll actually get some nice uh, items from him, at least. Uh, he doesn't gain any skills, though, and... Um, he, do he can also give you the Defense Staff, uh, only if you pick him, which I believe increases defense by 10 for of a unit for a whole chapter, which is pretty ridiculous. Unfortunately, you don't really have... Uh, I'm not really going to use him. He is useful for that, and he, he probably can do some damage. I mean, he has 13 magic, which is pretty decent, but eventually he'll be not that great, unfortunately. Alright, next we have Ezekiel, who is an Axe Knight. 
And you don't get that many unpromoted axe users in this game, really. I could see that. <laughs> I, I think I can see that he uses an axe. I mean, he even has an axe in his sprite right there. So let's reconsider. And Ezekiel is pretty good as well. He's probably the second best of these four. Uh, I would put Lee third. You know, actually, Lee and Ezekiel might be on par because he does give the defense staff. Lee does. I don't think Ezekiel does, but he is used for an event later on. Anyway, he is an axe knight. He promotes to. Oh, it doesn't actually tell me. Okay, sorry. I think he promotes to sergeant. I'm pretty sure he does. He also has Gale and Siege. So, Castle ter Terrain bonuses right there. His stats aren't that bad, and he has a Steel Axe to begin with, which has pretty terrible hit, but, you know, that's kind of axes in general. And he has a decent amount of HP, and he's level 4. He's pretty decent. He wouldn't be a bad pick here. And this is Naren. Now, I may as well rename this game to Naren Saga, because he's ridiculous. He's the one I'm talking about that is just absolutely fucking broken, honestly. He pretty much sold the game for me last time, like I said. And I like how they totally diss him here. But he's like, yeah, he may be diamond in the rough. He may be a diamond in the rough. More like best unit in the game. So he is a cavalier and his base stats suck. Uh, immediately you see the fact that he, you probably imagine that he sucks. And yeah. At first glance, of course, he sucks, but his growth rates are one of the best in the game, and that's not really that great because most of the growth rates suck in this game. Uh, there are a few that, that have better growth rates than him, but yeah. So he has Elite, and he can promote at level 10. Everyone can promote at level 10. You actually go up to level 30, and in some cases you can go up to level 40, and you can promote any time after level 10, so it's kind of like FE4. We just want to promote as soon as possible if you have the item anyway. Uh, you do it by items here. And his promotion gains are so ridiculous and that what that's what makes him broken. He also promotes the Gold Knight, which is pretty much the best class in the game, so he's ridiculous. And we will be choosing him. I don't know why he has green map uh, here on the map. Lastly we have uh, Luca or Ruka. They kind of steal names from Fire Emblem as well. I mean, I just think of uh, Fire Emblem 2 Luca when I look at this guy, the soldier. This guy is an archer though, and he is apparently a competent archer, and we're going to see why that is just not the case. He is the worst. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's the worst of these four. He has 7 attack base. 7 attack base with a bow. Yes, this guy is pretty much Walt, and maybe even worse than Walt. Uh, he does have 8 speed, but remember speed is automatically decreased, so he does have 7 speed with a handbow. I mean, come on man, this guy is just not that great. He can do an event, but the event isn't that important. So I would say this guy's probably the worst here. Also, the star means uh, that you can't let the unit die, by the way, beside their name. Otherwise it's game over. I didn't explain that before. Also, Marin here. Look at those stats. He could solo the first half of the game for me. <laughs> anyway, let's pick Naren. I've been talking too much. So he's going to say the same thing. I don't know what pose he's trying to figure. He's like half bowing all the time. Yeah, yeah, diss him again and then we'll actually get him here. Yeah, he's fine. He's the fucking one of the best units in the game. He's fine. Alright, so bandit time. But first, we're gonna have even more talking because uh, this game is made of talking. No! It's <laughs> so harsh. Even Esther is going. That's true. Oh, yeah, I gotta talk about Esther and Raffin and Naren as well, I guess. Uh, I should have put up the growth rates and stuff of all those units. But, yeah. I think it's going to be pretty hard for me to actually put in all the skills and growth rates of all the units because not really any way to put them. The, the, that graphical glitch whenever Esther pops up is kind of bothering me, that white line there. There's also kind of a... yeah, it's kind of weird. But I'll get over it. Okay. 
I'm getting there. I'm getting there slowly, very slowly. So we're going back to Carter here. Still walks free. So yeah, they're pretty much going to try and kill the princess. Awesome. Also, now we have like Aryan Nazi guy. Seriously, look at this guy. Jesus. This guy is Erish, and he's one of the first bosses we fight as well. Most of them don't really have that much personality, but you know, you kind of expect that. And here is Lionel, and he's actually a person we'll be seeing later on, and he is kind of a good guy here. Though, of course, Cotter is lying to him, pretty much. Seriously, look at this guy's face. Jesus. And on the other side we have Lionel with ginger hair and ginger eyebrows. Then bring her here. And of course he starts to lie. And of course Lionel doesn't have the best idea here because he basically just gets imprisoned immediately. I get. I guess he just uh, wanted it to go that way. Eretz. I'm pretty sure that name is wrong. Wasn't it Erish? Unless there's some other guy I'm forgetting about. Also, this guy we'll be seeing later on as well. His name is Norton. That face. He's he's very smart, as we can tell. Yeah, I thought it was Irish, but alright. Well, harsh, man. He's just like, yep, sounds like a good guy to work for. So there's Codder Armor, <laughs> the Codder, yeah, Codder Army over there. And there's bandits. So now we can buy some extra stuff at the weapon store here. I think they've got slightly different stuff. Um, you can actually go between people to actually get uh, give the item directly to them. So that's nice. And the item store. Okay, charms and stuff. Uh, I can sell stuff. I mean, I don't really want to sell anything right now. Like I said, money is pretty tight in this game. Uh, I don't believe we actually get any pre-battle talk here. Bandit suppression. Why is it not bandit disembarkation? I'm disappointed. This is in Taurus Village, apparently. And this is map 2, and as you can see, it's pretty big compared to the last one. So here's the map right here. There's two units here that we will be seeing. Uh, I'll go and introduce them next time. Our boss here is Yizam, who looks pretty weird. And we've got a lot of units to take care of here. We're going to spawn up here. Also, uh, manage. We can also select like the cutoff point, I think, if we press start. Basically, anyone who's below that line will not be selected for the battle, which is quite useful later on if you don't have enough units. So this is all the units we have. Let's talk about Esther and Rathen. So first of all, Esther has fours in pretty much everything. Four in the first four stats. So good. Her base stats kind of not that great. She comes with two slim weapons, which are pretty bad, especially the slim sword. How much damage? Wow, the slim sword is literally like the worst item in the game. I think that's why Sasha starts with it, of course. You know, Sasha might actually be decent if she didn't have that. <laughs> she has a support with Raffin, and she also promotes to Paladin, so this is not the same promotion as Arcus and Cress. So, there's that. And Paladin actually has pretty good promotion gains as well. I don't think she's as good as Naren eventually, but she's decent. Eventually. But right now, she's not that good. But kind of like Naren, she'll get better. Raffin, on the other hand, is actually one of our best units right now. He has the Needle Spear, which is basically a critical, uh, like a killing lance, a killer lance. Uh, that said, I don't know if there is actually killer ones in the game or if it's just these. It has 20 crit and it weighs 7, so. But it does have 10 power, which is nice. He also has a Steel Sword, which has pretty poor hit, but it does have 9 power. 
and it does weigh 6. So you got to constantly be watching that weight there. I mean, he has zero speed with that on. But negative numbers aren't really that uncommon here. So he has removement, which means basically Kanto. And he can use spears and swords. And he does not really promote, but he does have an event where he basically promotes. So he promotes by event, essentially. And he has a... Okay, apparently he has a support with uh, Esther and Sasha. I almost forgot their names there. Lastly, Naren. I didn't really show his other screens off because I couldn't, but he does promote to Gold Knight, as we can see. Right now he's got Squire as his title, but they do actually change on promotion. And that is pretty much it. I can manage stuff... Uh, I think I can throw items around here now, if I want to. And I basically wanted to give a wood shield to Naren, so I can actually do that here. Because I want to train Naren a lot for this map, so he can help in the third map a lot. But we'll see when we get there. So I think that's enough for now. Man, how long have we been recording for? So, I don't know if you guys want to say if you would prefer animations to be off for most of it. Uh, I'll probably do it, I'll probably keep animations on for the first part at least, like the first 10 chapters or something. But after that, I'm not so sure. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time for Tearing Ring Saga.